If a child is asked to think about an aircraft, it will probably think about the Boeing 747. The quad ancient airliner with its hump at the nose is maybe the world's best known airplane ever built. Its history is just as stunning as its production that lasted for 50 years and where over 1500 aircraft were built. But what if this legendary aircraft never had been built? The story how the Boeing 747 came up is quite well known. Pan American Airlines founder and president Juan Tripp asked Boeing president William Elm to build an aircraft twice the size of the already existing Boeing 707. Elm reacted, if you buy it, I build it. That's where our first scenario begins. We all know what happened next. 737 designer Joe Sutter went to design the Boeing 747 and in 1969 it did its first flight and over 1500 units were built. In our scenario, Boeing President Allen refused to build the 747 and declared it as impossible. The risk of building an aircraft of this size would be too enormous to take for Boeing. And indeed, building such an aircraft almost made Boeing bankrupt. Important to understand this scenario is the situation of the airplane market in the mid to late 1960s. The number of available jets for the market was quite low. On the short and medium haul market there was the Boeing 727 and its successor the Boeing 737. Boeing had already successfully maintained its 707 program, the first real successful long haul jet for several years. Douglas had the DC-8 which even reached supersonic speeds in test flights and Convair had the Model 880. There was especially one thing that all these aircraft had in common. There were narrow body single ale jets. At this time this was standard and if there wasn't Chosata and his 747 it would maybe not have changed in the following years. However, in the mid to late 1960s almost every aircraft manufacturer was working on his own high capacity airliner. Locking was developing its brand new first jet Liner, the L1011 TriStar, which would be revolutionary in design and technology, but as we all know, was not a big success. Only 250 of them were built in a time span of 14 years. Douglas was already setting the base for its most successful and only white body family, the DC 10. Just a few years after its introduction, crashes will lead Douglas' newest aircraft to be grounded, a similar situation to the 737 MAX crisis today. Later, several modifications of the DC-10 would be designed and built, and still today FedEx operates dozens of original DC-10s in the cargo airline. As you could easily tell, there were already a handful of designs following the new trend to white body aircraft in the 1960s, but there was still another innovation in the aviation industry, supersonic travel. The European Concorde did its first flight the same year as the Boeing 747 and the Soviet Tupolev Tu-144 even flew two months earlier. Society, airlines and airplane manufacturers saw the future of traveling in these airplanes that flew twice the speed of sound. Therefore, Boeing invested a large amount of money in its new 2707 project. At the same time, Boeing had to look for a short-term solution for the growing market of air travel. A plane being a whole lot bigger than the 707 was in the need. Boeing decided to design an aircraft twice the size of the 707 that could easily be converted to a freighter after supersonic jets had taken over the market for passenger jets. What came out was the Boeing 747, designed by Joe Sutter, the designer of the 727 and 737 series. But what would have happened if Boeing instead decided to fully rely on the supersonic 2707 without a backup plan or any short term solution, without an answer for the need of new white body aircraft for the market of the 1970s? The answer is not easy, but most probably nothing would have happened immediately. Long term this decision would have changed the whole American international aviation industry. Supersonic aircraft would sooner or later turn out as technological or commercial failures and it's unlikely that the 2707 would have reached greater success. Airlines would have definitely bought competing aircraft to the never built 747 and had two ways to go. Douglas DC-10 and Lockheed TriStar. Orders for these types would have risen tremendously, making the DC-10 maybe one of the most successful white body jets ever built. And the TriStar would maybe have been a lot more successful than it actually was. As we all know, the TriStar was Lockheed's last ever commercial aircraft project because of its commercial failure. This could have turned out different. In our scenario, Lockheed developed several new white body long haul jets in the following centuries and today could be one of the most successful aircraft manufacturers. 
The same goes for Douglas. Today Douglas would maybe be in a similar position as Boeing is. A world leading company consisting of both commercial and military departments and leading the way into the future. Versions of the DC-10 and DC-9 would maybe still be produced today just as we know it from the Boeing 737 MAX and the 747-8. Another aircraft that's not really well known today could also have got a chance to take to the skies the McDonnell Douglas MD-12. You can imagine the MD-12 as a kind of Airbus A380 from the 90s. With a capacity of 500 seats, it would have been competing with the never existing Boeing 747. That leads to the question, where is Boeing? There are several possibilities. In our scenario, I can see Boeing in a similar position both as Lockheed and Douglas are right now. Boeing could have reduced its market to manufacturing only military aircraft, as Lockheed did originally. On the other hand, it's possible that the merger between Boeing and Douglas would have happened anyway, just reversed. Instead of Boeing buying McDonnell Douglas after financial struggles, Douglas could have bought Boeing. It would also have been possible that Boeing and Lockheed decided to work together. In both cases, Boeing would not really be a thing today in 2022. The huge competition would be a thing between Douglas, Lockheed and Airbus. But what about Airbus? Airbus was originally created to compete with the American aircraft manufacturers and break the American monopoly. In the case there was already a competition in the American plane market, there wouldn't have been such a big need for another manufacturer. However, it's likely that Airbus would still have been founded as a union of smaller European aircraft manufacturers. Airbus would definitely exist right now in 2022, but not in the way it does right now. While the described scenario seems pretty radical, it's by far not the only one possible. Boeing could also have succeeded with its SST project and make the 2707 one of its best-selling aircraft. Compared to Concorde, the 2707 had several major benefits such as price and speed. In 1970, the 2707 had already 122 orders from 26 airlines worldwide. This could have led to a successful program in the following decades if the old crisis didn't happen. Due to the high cost of fuel the Congress of the United States stopped the program. Supersonic travel would need too much fuel to make financial sense. After that happening, plans to finish the project never came up again. If the oil crisis didn't happen, Boeing could actually have succeeded the 2707 program. In this case, Boeing thought of not building the 747 would have paid out and Boeing would be the one and only manufacturer of American supersonic aircraft. Similar to what we know from the 747, the 2707 could have been produced in several variants and generations and there would even have been a chance for it to be still flying today. On the other hand, a similar fate as to the European Concorde is possible. Concorde was built just over a dozen times, it suffered several crashes and in the end it was retired after 30 years of not being profitable. We don't know what would have happened if this specific scenario turned out. Maybe Boeing would have gone completely new ways in the 90s and 2000s with building the Sonic Cruiser, a high capacity plane built to replace the aging supersonic jets. It's unclear if we had aircraft like the Boeing 777 today. In the late 20th century and early 21st century things went on very quickly and too many scenarios would start right at this moment. Maybe that's a reason for another video or even a full documentary one time. Write your thoughts in the comments, what do you think have happened if Boeing didn't build the 747? It would be really great to talk about alternative scenarios that I could cover in future next parts of What If. Thanks a lot for watching this video till the end, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Support the channel by clicking the red button below and we'll see each other in the next video.